is it? What are you doing? Well, thank you for inviting us to Pure Vision, Steve. Tell us about your Oldsmobile. So I am a, uh, a lover of Oldsmobile and Buicks, which of course I own, own uh, one of, of each. So I was uh, driving around here in Simi Valley down a major street that I puts around on every day for lunch, and there's a uh, uh, motorcycle dealership, actually a Triumph motorcycle dealership, and this was out front with a little for sale sign. So I stopped immediately and went in found out how much and that was well within the price range that I was willing to pay for something I just saw 30 <laughs> seconds ago. <laughs> and uh, I picked it up and brought it home and I originally wanted to do this thing called Project Long Weekend. And what that was was everything I was going to do to the car was something simple that a guy could do over a long weekend by himself or with some friends, like swap the suspension out for the Hotchkiss parts or put the vintage air in. That may be a little more than a weekend, but not bad with the shirt that kits. And um, bolt in the 200R because on these, like the Chevelles, the power glides he came with, they're the same exact length as a 200R. So you slide the transmission mount back, drill four new holes, and you change the yoke. So that's pretty cool. So I didn't change the motor. Um, I wanted to put in a better cooling system, some sound gear from Kicker, you know, some neat upgrades and make a really cool cruiser. And I was going to kind of do little filming installs with it, like, hey, this weekend we're going to do this. And we're going to take this plain Jane car that's like, hmm, grandma, you know, post car, which there's a reason why I wanted a post car. It's called Seals Really Good. Coops, the aftermarket glass fits like crap. And you either got to make it impossible to crank up and get it to seal or rails up, rolls up really great and then barely seals. Well, with a fixed window, that's not a problem. And I wanted to drive this thing cross country. I wanted to drive it, drive it, use it. So one thing, of course, leads to another. And I wind up <laughs> pulling the frame out from under it and scraping the bottom off. And there was no rust in it. So I uh, shot all that epoxy paint, had the frame powder coated. And all the Hotchkiss stuff is already powder coated, so bolt that on. The motor was already rebuilt. I added a uh, Joe Modelo cam, an Edelbrock intake carb, and uh, a Pontiac HEI, you know, so I got rid of the points and stuff. And that started the evolution of wanting it painted. So, of course, I went over to Mick like, and um, cleaned up this, cleaned up that, new weather stripping. And uh, so the interior, um, to keep the dollar figure as low as possible, all of its repop stuff except for the front seats. I found a killer deal for these 2000, they're 2011 Porsche Panamera seats, which are really tall. So I had Gabe's cut like eight inches off of them. And uh, one of my employees, Pete, who's an electrical whiz, we went through 31 pages of wiring diagram for that driver's seat. And also like the headlights are new Hella, and uh, I actually have a set of uh, like KC driving lights on the bottom. I will light up the night. Um, what about wheels and tires? What did you choose? Uh, these, I absolutely love these. These are Cragger Eliminator 500s, and it ma it amazes me that more people in the aftermarket didn't use them. They look, they're look, they great looking, obviously a very leaned towards the, the Hurst wheel, the Hurst Olds uh, Pontiac wheel. Um, and these 17s were, well, I can say it now, they're under 200 bucks a rim. They stopped making them. They've been making them for decades and they just stopped making them. I'm glad, I mean, I got them a little while ago, but they fit this car perfectly. And uh, a nice set of Conti's, uh, Continentals. It's a all weather high performance tire, basically the tire that's on the, uh, the Continental GT, the Bentley. Um, so great handling, but yet I can handle, cause I'm planning on taking it to Colorado and other places. So rain, snow, not a problem with these tires. They're a very good tire. And tell us a little bit about the paint, because there's a bit of a story with the paint, right? Yeah, well, I was uh, over at a friend of mine's grabbing some uh, lunch. He, uh, he has a really great pizzeria, and I uh, like all good New York boys, I like a good pie. And uh, I was just driving. I wasn't driving this car yet, and I, I just bought it, actually, at that time. And there was a Mercedes parked in the parking lot, and I just stopped. I love the color. Um, it's called Quartz Blue. Um, so I took a picture of the car and a picture of the, you know, uh, the emblem, whatever. I think it was a, it was an S class or a C class, but that way I could go to the Mercedes dealership and go, what is this? What color is that? So they said, oh yeah, that's quartz blue, da, 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 da. 
And so when I had a Mick over at Mick's paint, paint I'm like, this is the color I want. Plus, it's great to find an OEM color because heaven forbid anything happen, it could be repaired like that Mercedes could be repaired. It's not some crazy mix that you'll never be able to uh, yeah. reproduce. I really, really like it. And it's not the standard issue. When I go, when I roll somewhere, it's not another red Camaro or black Chevelle or, you know, white Mustang with blue stripes. It's, it's definitely its own thing for good or for bad, which I, which I like a lot too. Yeah, nice car. <laughs>